Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. My name is Velilini Nkosi. In this video, we do a presentations about human eye. So human eye falls under human responding to environment. So here I have the examination guideline. So this is the examination guideline for life sciences. We are on responding to the environment in human. So human eye. So I will elaborate on this content. So this content under elaboration, I will explain everything that is under this topic. So with I hope you have this guideline. If you don't have, you can get it from the website of the Department of Basic Education. So without wasting more time, let's get to it. So here is the front view of the eye. So in the front, what we see, we see the iris. This is the iris and then the eyelash and then pupil. So pupil is this opening at the center of the iris. And then we see a sclera. So this is the front view of the human eye. And then if you, we cut this eye here, at the middle here, and then view it from this side. So what we will see, we will see something like this one. So these are all the parts of the human eye. So you must be able to label this part and then explains each function. So you can post the, vid the video now and then see these parts. So I will explain each part and then functions. So first of all, let me start with a sclera. So a sclera is a tough white inelastic layer that covers the eye. So this white part here is called a sclera. So a sclera, the functions of the sclera, it protects the inner structure of the eye and then it maintains the eye shape. So this white part here, it protects the inner structures of the eye and then it maintains the eye shape. So this is the functions of the sclera. And then the next part it's the cornea. So the cornea is a transparent continuation of the sclera in front of the eye. So if you see here, the sclera is this white part. But from here, maybe until here, this part is called a cornea because it's transparent, but it's a continuation of the sclera. So the functions of the cornea, it allows the light to pass through. So the light will pass will enter the eye through the cornea and then another functions of the cornea it causes refraction of the incoming light so if the light maybe it comes through the eye so the cornea what will do it will bend this light and then this light can enter the eye so it is, is another functions of the only of the cornea so when uh, they're talking about the refraction we are talking about the bending of the light. So this is the functions of the cornea. And then the next part is a choroid. So a choroid is a dark colored layer which contains blood vessel and the pigment. So this red layer here is called a choroid. So the functions of this choroid, the pigments of the choroid, it absorb the light. So the pigments absorb the light and then the blood vessels supply nutrients and the oxygen so choroid it's supplying nutrients and the oxygen to the eye or part of the eye and then the next part is the retina so a retina is the inner layer of the eye which contains the rods and the cones that are sensitive to light so rods and the cones are activated by the stimulus which is a light a light is one of the stimulus so they are activated the, the, the lights activate rods and the codes and then the function of the retina because it contains rods and the codes rods respond to a low intensity light while cones respond to a bright light so this is the functions of the retina it responds to a light while rods respond to a low intensity light Cones respond to a bright light. And then 
another part it's the yellow spot so we have a yellow spot and the blind spot so a yellow spot when we talk about the yellow spot we talk about this spot at the retina so there is an indentation at the back of the eye so a yellow spot is a small indentation at the back of the eye and then it contains most cones <clears throat> and then functions is the area of the clearest vision so when you see something clearly that is mean the thing that you see its light has falls at the yellow spot so if the light of whatever that you are looking for falls at the yellow spot then you will see clearly and then we have a blind spot so blind spot is this part here so blind spot is the area of the retina with no cones or rods and then is the area where nerves leaves the eye so this part so here we have a nerve so the nerve leaves the eye at the blind spot and at the blind spot there is no cones or rods so there's no vision that is formed here so you must know that the blind spot is the area of no vision and then the next part we is the iris so here is the iris when we look at it in the longitudinal section iris are these two things while in front this is the iris so iris is a colored portion of the eye with the opening at the center so iris it has an opening at the center and the functions of the iris it controls the amount of light entering the eye so this is the function of the iris if it increase the pupil size then more light will enter and then if it decrease then little light or less light will enter the eye and then another part is the pupil so pupil is the opening at the center of the iris and then the functions of the pupil it control the amount of light entering the eye or it allows the light to enter the eye so these are the functions of the pupil and then pupil here if we look at it in the longitudinal section this is the pupil so it's this hole here it's called a pupil but in front this is the pupil so the next part is the ciliary body so a ciliary body it contains a ciliary muscle when we talk about ciliary body we talk about this section so this section it's a ciliary body and then its function the ciliary body contract and relax to alter the tension of the suspensory ligament so because here we've got the suspensory ligaments like this part here it's a suspensory ligament if the ciliary muscle contract and relax they have a effect on the suspensory ligaments this is the functions of a ciliary body uh, and then the next part is suspensory ligament so suspensory ligaments are attached to ciliary body so here uh, this is uh, the suspensory ligaments one and then suspensory ligaments two which is attached to the ciliary body and the lenses so the functions of the suspensory ligaments suspensory ligaments hold lens in position so if you see here are uh, the ones that hold the, the lens in position and then also alter the shape of the lens so they can change the shape of the lens so we will see it when we do accommodation so these are the functions of the suspensory ligaments and then the next part is the lens so this is a lens a lens is an elastic and biconvex structure behind the pupil so this is the the lens and then the functions of the lens changes shape to allow eye focus on near or far so lens will change the shape so that we can focus on something that is near or far so this is the functions of the lens and then it allow lights to pass through it also allow lights to pass through these are the functions of the lens so these are the functions that are important you must know all the functions that i have just explained and then the next thing is the binocular vision so when we talk about a binocular vision 
A binocular vision is a vision which both eyes are used together. So if you see here, I have a left eye and the right eye. So they are looking at something. And then the advantages of binocular vision, it gives a wider field of view. But if you look at the, the left eye, the view of the left eye is this, this side. This is the view of the left eye. And then the view of the right eye is this size. But if we use both eyes, the view will be like this big. So the importance of the binocular vision, it gives a wider view. So it, it increases the view. So this is the importance of the binocular vision. So even if we use two eyes to look at something, we don't see two things. We only see one, which is our brain interpret this photo as one. It, the information might be separate, but when it reaches the brain, it becomes one information. So this is the importance of binocular vision. And then next up is the accommodation. So accommodation is the adjustment of the shape of the lens to see object clearly, whether they are far away or close by. So if something is far away, so that that thing maybe is far, like it's greater than six meter, and then the shape of the lens will be like this one. But if whatever that we are looking for is near, like it's less than six meter, the shape of the lens will be a bit round. So we must be able to explain the process of accommodation. So here is the process. So when we look at something that is far, so here are the CR muscle, suspensory muscle, and the lens. The process is if something is far, the ciliary muscle relax. So this ciliary muscle will relax and then suspensory ligaments will be tight. So this will tight the suspensory ligaments and the tension on the lens increase. So here the, the lens will increase its tension and the lens is less convex or is flatter. If you see here, this lens is flat and the light rays refracted less. And then if the light enters this side will not reflect it more, will just the reflection will be a little bit less and the light rays focus onto the retina. So like you will, the light will be refracted less. So this is the process of the accommodation if we see something that is far. So you must be able to explain this process. So now let's look at the process if we are looking at something that is near. So uh, when something is near, the ciliary muscle will contract. So this ciliary muscle will contract and the suspensory ligaments will be slackened. And then tension on the lens will decrease. And then the lens is more convex or it's more round. If you see here, the lens is more round. That means we are looking something that is near and then the light ray refracted more like if we, we something that is closer to the eye so this will tend more like the bending will be more so this is how a near vision works and then the light ray will focus onto the retina so this is how the process of a near vision works so you must be able to explain this process during exam, they might ask you, explain what happened when you look at something that is near or something that is far. And then next up is a pupillary mechanism. So with pupillary mechanism is the process by which the diameter of the pupil alter to control the amount of light entering the eye. We know that a pupil is this part at the center of the iris. And then the iris, it has some muscle we have a radial muscle with which are this radius muscle and then it has a circular muscle which are circular like this one this ones which are who are circular are called the circular muscles and then we need to be able to explain the process 
of papillary mechanism. So uh, I will explain this process. So this papillary mechanism goes together with the light intensity. If it's dim light condition, the pupil become very big. But if it's very bright light, the pupil is very small. So now let me explain the processes. So if it's dim light, radial muscle of the iris contract and then secular muscle of the iris relax and then pupil widen or it get bigger and then more light enters the eye. So this is the process of pupillary mechanism if it's dim light. And then let's see if it's bright light. So if it's bright light, the radial muscle of the iris relax. So the radial muscle will relax. The secular muscle of the iris will contract. So as the secular muscle contract, the size of the pupil becomes small. So the pupil contract or get smaller and then less light enters the eye. That is mean it's bright. So if it's bright and the pupil is still large like this, this light will destroy the roots and the cones at the retina. So this is the process of the pupillary mechanism. And then next up is, is the visual defect. So visual defect are the problems that are found in the eyes. So uh, we have short sightness and the long sightness. So short sightness is the ability to see nearby object but cannot see distance clearly. So if something is far, you cannot see it clearly. And then like if we can see here, we have this round here. And then here we have, instead of falling at the yellow spot, look where it falls. And then we end up not seeing it because uh, now it's far. So what causes it? It can cause by if an eyeball that is too long. So if the eyeball is too long, you find that the lens, when the lens is refracting the light and then it put the object before the yellow spot or before the retina. So it might cause this short sightedness. You only see things that are near. But if something is far, then you won't see it. And then it might cause again by the cornea being too cleft. So if the cornea is too cleft, it might cause short sightedness and then inability of the lens to be less convex. So if the, 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 the lens is not able to be less convex. This may cause short sightedness. So the short sightedness, it's when if something is far, then this object will fall inside the eye. And then the treatment is wearing it last week, concave lenses. And then another thing, it might be somebody with long sightedness. So someone with long sightedness is the ability to see this dense object but cannot see the object near like here like if you see this ball it's near but look where it falls so you won't be able to see it because now it falls at the back of the eye it's supposed to fall here if we want to see it clearly it's supposed to fall here so but now it's at the back of the eye and then what causes an eyeball that is too short so if you see here they are different this one, the eyeball is too long, but this one, the eyeball is too short. And then the cornea not being kept enough. Here, the cornea being too kept. And then inability of the lens to be more convex. And then here is inability of the lens to be less convex. If you see, these things are like opposite. If this one is long, this one is short. So the treatment is weightless with concave lenses so these are the visual defect and then the causes and the treatment you need to know the causes and the treatment so this is the visual effect and then there are other two visual effect which i have lost their slides which are which are astigmatism and the cataracts so these are another two visual effect so i have lost the slides of these two visual defects and then I will make another video then I will include them. So 
if you have watched this video to this far thank you very much i really appreciate it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so if you are studying good luck with your studies god bless you thank you very much